today I'm going to show you how to use the new input system with the Cinemachine camera in a super easy way. And shout out to Christian Brousseau, I hope I pronounced that right, for letting me know about this way. So recently, you would have to override the default Cinemachine values, such as here, you get a reference to the Cinemachine free look, and then you would have to override the axis values for the new input system. But now there's a super easy way how to override them. So first you want to make sure you have Cinemachine and the input system installed. So go to Window, Package Manager. And so once the package manager has loaded up, you want to make sure to have Cinemachine. And I have no idea why it's throwing that error because I already have it installed. But anyways, and you want to make sure to have the input system installed. And this will ask you to restart the editor, so you just click yes. Alright, so I already have a character set up here, and I'm going to be making a free look camera, even though this also works with virtual camera, basically anything that requires input from the mouse. So click create free look camera, and now we can drag in our player game object, so we can follow our player game object, and we can also drag it into look at, so it looks at our player game object. And I'm just going to adjust the values here so that it's facing forwards. Alright, so you can see that in the y-axis and x-axis, it has a mouse x and mouse y, and that uses the old input system. So when we click play, you'll see that we have a bunch of null reference errors. And that's because we're trying to read the input using the input system class, but we have switched to the new one. Instead, we can add a component called Cinemachine Input Provider. And here you'll see that it accepts an input action reference for the x and y axis, as well as the z axis. So now you can see that the mouse x and the mouse y don't show up anymore, and that's because we're overriding it with the Cinemachine Input Provider. So the one you're most likely going to be using, and the one we want to focus on, is the x-y axis. Because when we move our mouse around, it's going to be on the two-dimensional plane, x and y. So it moves sideways and upwards and downwards. And you can leave the z-axis null if you're not using it. This takes in a vector2 input action, and this takes in a float input action. So let's quickly create a new input system. So right-click, create, input actions, and let's call this look controls. And now that we have our input system here, we can add a new action map. I'm just going to call it mouse. An action map is just a grouping of actions, and you can activate action maps for different circumstances. But in this case, we're just going to say mouse look for our action because we want to look around. And our action type is going to be pass through or value. I'll just select pass through, and then I'm going to select vector 2 since we want our mouse to move in a vector 2. And then for our binding, we can click that and click path. And then we can go down to mouse. And so I'm going to select delta. And delta is the difference in movement between the previous frame and the current frame. And so our delta will give us our direction in which our mouse is moving. So we just click Save Asset, and then in our Cinemachine camera, you can scroll down, you can press the circle, and then you can select your input action, mouse slash mouse look. All right, and when we press play, we'll be able to move around with the new input system. Awesome. And if you're also wondering, you can do this for the virtual camera. So for the virtual camera, if you choose hard lock the target, for example, and then for the aim, you put POV, then you see that you have a mouse X and a mouse Y, and then you can just add in the input provider here, and you'll see that it will override those values since they disappear from the inspector. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I want to thank you all for 2,000 subscribers. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your support. I want to thank my mods on my Discord channel as well as my patrons. Thank you so much for all of your support. I really appreciate it. If you're interested in becoming a patron, the link is in the description. I offer early access source code as well as an exclusive Discord chat. And if you haven't already, be sure to join our Discord chat where you can just chat along or ask anything in the help channels or just post memes. So thanks and see you next time.